This is singer, songwriter, and actor, Bobby Darren. Bobby was born Walden Robert Casodo on May the 14th, 1936, in East Harlem, New York. At that time, his mother, 17-year-old Vanina Joliet Casodo, was nicknamed Tina, and her grandmother, Vivian Walden Casodo, was called Polly. They had cooked up a scheme to hide Nina's pregnancy by passing Bobby off as Polly's son and as Nina's younger brother. Bobby was told that his grandmother was actually his mother and that his mother was his older sister. He didn't learn the truth until he was in his 30s. Bobby's grandfather, Sam Casodo, had passed away in prison from pneumonia one year before Bobby's birth. Sam had been considered an associate crime boss of the gangster Frank Costello. While Bobby was still a youngster, the family moved to the Bronx. At the age of eight, he was stricken with rheumatic fever that left him seriously ill with a weakened and damaged heart for the rest of his life. The family was told it'd be unlikely that he would live to reach the age of 16. However, Bobby found out what the doctors had said and was always in a hurry to make his mark before his time ran out. Even though Bobby was sickly as a youngster, he was a very good student, and in junior high, he learned to play the drums that he had borrowed from a friend. By the time he had started the prestigious Bronx High School of Science, Bobby had learned to play the piano and guitar along with the drums. After graduating from high school, he entered Hunter College and enrolled in the drama department. He felt that college was a waste of time that he didn't have. And after two semesters, he dropped out to pursue an acting career. At the age of 19, while in a candy store in Washington Heights, Bobby by chance met a high school friend that he had graduated with, Don Kirshner, who at the time was writing songs, and the two formed a partnership. Their partnership led to a meeting with George Sheckle, who was managing teen idol Connie Francis. While Bobby and Don was writing for Connie, a romance developed between Darren and Francis. It's been said that Bobby wanted to elope and Connie's father threatened him with a gun not to see his daughter again. Bobby told her that it was either him or her father. Connie Francis stated years later that not marrying Bobby Darren was the biggest mistake of her life. While looking to change his name so that people could easily remember it, one story goes, that he spotted a neon sign for a Mandarin, M-A-N-D-A-R-I-N, Chinese restaurant that had the letters Man, M-A-N, gone out, leaving only Darren. He had been called Bobby from his youth, therefore his new name was Bobby Darren. Others say that he actually picked the name from a phone book. Bobby managed to get a contract with Decca Records with not much success. He then signed with Atlantic Records, where he recorded I Found a Million Dollar Baby, which was also a disappointment. In 1958, Bobby was friends with disc jockey Murray Kaufman, whose mother was also a songwriter, and she was having problems writing a song that fit the title Splish Splash Take a Bath. Bobby said, heck, I can write a song to that title. Murray challenged Bobby to write a Splish Splash song on the spot. Bobby wrote Splish Splash in a few minutes as a joke. It became a number one seller. Bobby appeared on a Dick Clark American Bandstand as the artist and shared the writer's royalties with Kaufman and his mother. The next year, 1959, Darren recorded and wrote Dream Lover. It became a multi-million seller. And in August of that year, he appeared again on the Dick Clark's Saturday Night Beach Nut Show. 
he followed Dream Lover with Mac the Knife, a song made famous by Louis Armstrong, and he was reluctant to record such an old standard song. He finally relented and recorded it. It went to number one on the charts for nine weeks and won the Grammy Award for the Record of the Year. Between making hit records, Bobby was also breaking attendance records on a nightclub circuit, such as the Copacabana in Manhattan and major Las Vegas casinos. He was meticulous about his appearance, and his hair had started thinning in his early 20s, so he began wearing a toupee in public. In 1959, Darren sang Beyond the Sea, a 1945 contemporary pop romantic song that had been recorded by several artists. However, Darren's version was far more successful than the others. Years later, in 2004, actor Kevin Spacey will star and produce the movie Beyond the Sea about the life of Bobby Darren and Sandra D. In 1960, Bobby stars in his first movie, a romantic comedy with Rock Hudson, Gina Lola Brigida, and teen star Sandra D. entitled Come September. Darren composed the title theme to the movie. The film was shot on location in Italy. It was the first time that he had met Sandra D who was already a teen star. The couple were soon in love, on camera and off. Three months after meeting the first time, on December the 1st, 1960, Bobby Darren and Sandra D. married at the apartment of Bobby's close friend, Don Kirshner, in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Bobby was 24 and Sandra was 18. One year later, on the 16th of December, 1961, their only child, Dodd Mitchell Darren, was born. Dodd will years later state in his book, Dream Lover, about his famous parents, that Sandra and her mother told everyone that she was two years older than she actually was in order to get modeling and acting work to cause confusion about her true age. In 1962, when Dodd was one year old, his father won the Golden Globe Award for his performance in his first film, Come September. The next year, in 1963, Darren will reach greater heights by being nominated for an Academy Award for Best Actor for his betrayal of a shell-shocked soldier in Captain Newman, M.D., when Capitol Records wanted Bobby to record Dunkel Shane, Bobby insisted that they let 21-year-old Wayne Newton, whom he had been mentoring, sing it. Darren threatened not to record again for Capitol if Newton was not able to sing the song. They relented, and Darren also promoted Newton's hit Red Roses for a Blue Lady in 1965. Newton stated, that if it hadn't have been for Bobby Darren, no telling where he'd be. In 1966, Bobby was sang one of his greatest hits, If I Were a Carpenter. Other artists had recorded the song, but no one had succeeded of performing and singing it the way Bobby Darren did. With all of his success, Bobby was always driving himself to achieve more, spending less time with his wife it was by now drinking heavy and having a serious eating problem. During their seven years' marriage, they had separated and reconciled several times. However, on 7 March 1967, it was final. Although they were divorced, they continued to care for each other through the years. Sandra would never marry again. She will always say that Bobby remained her one true love and that their breakup was both their faults. Thirty-eight years after their divorce, Sandra D. will pass away from kidney failure and pneumonia at the age of 62. She's buried at Forest Lawn Memorial Park, 
Hollywood Hills, and she remains America's teenage sweetheart. After his divorce from Sandra, Darren became involved in politics. He began supporting and traveling with Democratic presidential candidate Robert Kennedy. Bobby was there in the early morning hours of June the 5th, 1968, at the Ambassador Hotel in Los Angeles when presidential candidate Robert Kennedy was assassinated. After Kennedy's death, Bobby was determined to enter politics. Nina, Bobby's birth mother, knew her secret about being his mother instead of his sister would be found out if he entered politics. So he was told the truth when he was 32 years old. Nina refused to reveal his dad's name and took it to her grave in 1983. Bobby was so affected by the news that he went into seclusion for almost a year. He stayed in a trailer at Big Sur. In 1969, Bobby Darren was ready to face the world again. He created his own record label called Directions Records and began writing and singing protest songs. During this period, he wrote Simple Song of Freedom. It became a well-known protest song. In January of 1971, Bobby underwent heart surgery to replace and install two artificial heart valves. He had been suffering for a lack of energy for a long time. He spent almost a year trying to recuperate but was unable to fully recover. On July the 27th, 1972, Darren starred in his own variety show on NBC. It was a part of Dean Martin's Presents. It lasted seven episodes until September the 7th, 1972. And in January of 1973, NBC presented The Bobby Darren Show. It ran for 13 episodes until the 27th of April, 1973. Bobby loved to play chess and would sometimes explain different chess moves on this show. During his performances, Bobby would take breaks backstage where he would be placed on oxygen in order to be able to continue performing. His audience was never aware of this fact. On the 25th of June, 1973, Bobby Darren weds for the second time. He married Andrea Yeager, a legal secretary. They divorced four months later on October the 24th, 1973. The official cause for the divorce was strain caused by Bobby's worsening heart problems. A few months after Bobby's divorce, he failed to take antibodies before a dental visit which is required for such heart conditions. Bobby developed septis, a dangerous systematic infection. And on the 11th of December, 1973, Bobby checked into the Cedars of Lebanon Hospital in Los Angeles to repair his two heart valves. On the 19th, a five-man surgical team worked for hours without success. In the early morning hours of December the 20th, 1973, Walden Robert Casoto, Bobby Darren, passed away in the recovery room without ever regaining consciousness. He was 37 years old. His star is on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, located at 1735 Vine Street. It was dedicated by his son, Dodd, and mother, Nina. Bobby's body was willed to science. <laughs>